thing to do as a head coach to get so many young players to buy in and all be playing at their peak. It is, but I think what Sacramento did, they paid Harrison Barnes and they paid Darren Fox. So what they said was, if you come to our team and you do the things the right way and you play hard, you make us think that you part of this building, building block, they're going to pay you and reward you. And so that kind of permeates throughout your locker room, and teams see that. And then last year, Smitty, there was a lot of talk about firing Luke Walton. And that team rallied around Luke Walton the last half of the season. And this year, man, when you watch them, it's not that they are a great team. You just got to play to beat them now. They have a purpose. They have a style. They're starting to develop a culture. And when you watch Darren Fox, early on in his career, when he first got drafted, it was all about scoring trying to establish yourself. He got paid, and you watch him now. He's distributing the ball. He's one of their best defenders. And then what I like about the team, they say, look, Darren, we love you. We're going to pay you. But we're still going to go out here and get Halliburton. We're still going to go get Mitchell. We're going to make this competitive. Because Wayne Emery used to say this all the time. Our job in management is to get talent. It's the player's job, not the coach. The players determine who play by how you play. Yeah, and I love it, Sam. You said it best, and that was what I was going to say is to go out there and get Halliburton. Obviously, he's a combo guard, but then go out there and get Davion Mitchell. It's nothing to slight against Darren Fox is we can all make it work, and at times they're playing those three guards together. Yeah. They're going small ball, but they can rotate guys, and I, Davion Mitchell, what I hear, has changed their practice. We talk about games. Mm -hmm. Yes, we see it in games, but when you have guys play that hard in practice, it raises the level of intensity. And in practice hard, you usually it translates into habits. games and have good habits. And I think that competition that Sam talked about is helping them. Next step for them is to find out what they're going to do with Marvin Bagley. And once they can figure that out, whether you trade them, plan them, or whatever you're going to do, to bring in another big, because they need another big to go. They do. Look, I, I want to hear from both you guys on this, but Smitty, you first, because when Rashawn Holmes does anything, you, like, get up out of your seat. You're excited just to see it. But Marvin Bagley was the second overall pick. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of organizations that go, okay, we drafted this guy high. We have to play him. We saw his agent make statements before the season, like, my guy's healthy. You won't play him. Well, the Kings looking to go above 500 again, and they're playing Rashawn Holmes. It seems as if... They have an identity of what they're trying to do. Um, what do you make of that? The situation of Rashawn Holmes getting the playing time and Marvin Bagley, who has all the talent in the world, is healthy right now, not just because that's what they want to do. Well, I think this has nothing to do with Rashawn Holmes. He plays the way he plays. They can also play together or they can split time. Rashawn Holmes has to be Rashawn Holmes. I look at Bagley as I don't know what's going on. I heard a statement come out that he's not in the rotation. I couldn't understand that, like, why? And they don't have to explain to us, but that type of talent, you drafted him number two, so obviously it looks like he'll be getting shipped out of town just from my been around the league long time. A number two pick doesn't play, Sam. That's You're saying question. he's not in the rotation. There's got to be a lot of things going on. I know he's been hurt, but there got to be some other when you look at And I don't say it's against the, the, the player. Something is not matching up. When you look at Rashard Holmes, has his game and body's changed since he come into the league? Yep. Okay, when you look at Marvin Bagley, has his body changed at all? What well, many years? It's three years of the league, right? I got more muscle. Look, man, this is the NBA. You can get drafted at 6'10, 218, 20 pounds, but you gotta put some beef, you gotta put some muscle. And one thing about getting in that weight room, Doug, it gives you confidence. It ain't about putting on muscle shirts and muscles to look big and strong, to look good in your clothes. It's about being able to hold your position and compete. And when you look at Marvin Bagley and you look at how everyone plays, I mean, he don't play hard enough. He doesn't put the work in. He ain't not put the work in his body. And you know this, Smitty. When you're the number two pick, you have a target on your back. And everyone who comes in, they are going to go at you because if I can outplay you, then what does that do for me? It elevates me. And so you got guys coming in here. And I want to say this. He has been given every opportunity to start because he was the number two pick. So for a team to take the former number two pick and tell him you're not in the rotation and take a young player like Rashard Holmes and develop him, that tells me they, they just looked at this and said, Rashard Holmes plays hard, he works hard, he's developing, he's getting better, and Bagley, he's been the same since they drafted him.